Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Blood of the Northmen by Chaza Games. It plays one to four players, takes about 40 to uh, 50 minutes to play, and is for ages 13 and up. And in the game Blood of the Northmen, you are going to be playing as Vikings, and your objective is to gather your warbands across the fjord and defeat your enemies. You can either do so in combat, or you can get your warbands onto each of four different types of settlements, and if you can make a route that connects all four of them, you can win that way as well. Use your strongholds and of course the tiles you'll be placing in the game to create the best area for you to solidify your victory. Don't forget about your special abilities and of course the way that you're going to win by having your characters here uh, and trying to get them onto your victory points uh, space over here, which is uh, only uh, six to win. A little more challenging than you might think though. We played this live, had a lot of fun with it, but we're going to go ahead into detail and how to explain the game and then of course my review on Blood of the Northmen. Let's take it down below and I'll show you the game. And here we have the game Blood of the Northmen and I currently set it up for two players and here's how it works. Basically every single player is going to get a Jarl and you can choose any Jarl that you want and they have a front and of course a back. It doesn't matter which one you choose though however because the special abilities are on separate tiles. Once you've gathered your Jarl then you go ahead and select the bag that represents the characters for that Jarl. So for instance in this case you have Jarl Halvar and this guy is going to have the shield and the spear and and take them all the miniatures out and place them on the little circles presented to you on the left hand side of your player board. Now do that for every single player. Then take your special abilities, these guys here, turn them over, shuffle them up, and deal out one to each player randomly and place it on the bottom right hand side of your player board. Each of these abilities are explained in the rule book and will assist you in gameplay. This over here, this tile, is basically your player aid. It'll explain what you do when you place tiles down on the game and the order in which you use your tiles. Then every single player is going to shuffle these all up, pile shuffle them, they're basically tiles that represent the different locations of the game, and then start with the first player, which will get this marker here, and deal out three, and then four, and five, and six for uh, each player. So basically three for the first player, and then plus one for every additional player. Then you're ready to begin the game. If you're going to play with the additional strongholds, you can set them aside next to these here, but these are an advanced rule variant. And of course, the towns are as well, which uh, basically you can look at the Kickstarter to see more information about that stuff. The next thing you're going to do is begin with the first player. They will then look at their hand and choose a tile. Now tiles all have unique sides, and that's the only thing that matters in the game is the sides of the tile, unless you're playing with the uh, town's expansion, which there's gonna be a town in the middle. Now, you're going to say, okay, how many forests are on the tile, uh, on the sides? This is one forest here. Uh, and then you're gonna go ahead and say, okay, how many water tile sides are there? There's one over here. And then you're going to look and say, okay, how many road sides? And there's two here, one and two. And then how many mountains? And in this case, this tile has none. And then after you've placed that tile down, you'll perform the actions that you can play that are available to you. The first action type is the forests. And forests will allow you to take a character from your supply and place it on the, uh, the tile that you've placed. You can place it anywhere you want on the tile there. Then the next action you can take is the water action. And the water action is gonna let you move between water from one area to another, or just simply from one tile to the next. So for instance, if I had these guys out and I wanted to take a water action and I had one water side, I could move this guy one space, which is pretty straightforward, right? Uh, the next action is the road action. And the road action is actually really cool. If I have these three tiles out and I want to take my road actions, I have two of them, I can move this guy from one area of a road to the far end. I could also make him go from all the way here and then he can come off of the board. He'll go clockwise around the board until he finds an outside road edge and then he'll place the character back there. So he'd actually make a full circle. I don't know why you do that, but you could if you wanted to. And then the last action is mountains. If there's a mountain on your board, uh, you can choose to attack a player that is in the same area as you. And you'll attack with your characters against any other characters on the board. And I'll explain how attacking works in a second. Then the extra thing you can do is on any of the four actions I just explained to you, if you don't want to do those, you can instead draw a tile. 
for each of the actions you use. Now you have to either do all actions as placing a dude or moving uh, or attacking or all actions of that specific type as a draw a tile. So in this case here, I'm just simply going to place a dude here. Then I'm going to collect one extra tile for the water and then two extra tiles for the roads. And the amount of tiles that you can collect is based on the amount of characters you have here in your supply. After that, this player will be done. Place, take all the actions, and move on to the next player. And for the first three actions, or first three things in the game, you must place tiles so they do not touch uh, other uh, the other tiles. So in this case here, uh, it's fine. Like one and one, I place that there. I can then go ahead and place a guy here for my uh, for my forest action. I have two waters, which I'm not going, I could choose to move, sure, I'll move there. And then I have two roads. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and gather these guys here, two, and then I have one of these. Actually, I can attack and show you how that works. So a mountain will allow me to attack. And attacking works pretty simply. The attacker is going to get a plus one. So in this case here, I'll look at my hand, and I'm going to determine how many mountains that I have. So I've got three here, and I have two here. I have one character plus one for attacking, which means I get two tiles to place down. And my enemy, or my opponent, gets one, because they have one character here and they can look in their hand and select a mountainous tile, or if they don't want to, they can select one from the top of the deck randomly. Then you flip and reveal, one, two mountains, one, two, three, four, five, five beats two, the other player will lose the units based on the difference, which would be three, and this character is going to go back into their supply. Uh, if a character defeats an enemy or an opponent, uh, then they're going to get a victory point, However, they can get up to two victory points that they defeat all of their enemies on the area, provided they have enough characters on the board present to gain those victory points. So in this case, he can only gain one because he only has one character on the board. All the cards or tiles that you use get discarded. And then, of course, the next action for the next player. Go ahead and take this. And uh, for the first action in the first three tiles in the game, I can't place them like this. And another rule is when placing tiles, you always have to place so that these sides match. And in this case, I can do something like that. Now, after this placement, for the rest of the game, I have to make sure that at least two sides match whenever I place a tile down. So after this player, let's say that he went ahead and put two more dudes out, he had his road actions, so maybe he moved them here. I always have to stop on an enemy. Uh, and then he gathered two more of these for uh, these guys here uh, for the water. All right, so the next person, when they play, they can place here, here, or here. They cannot place just like this anymore. That is no longer an option in the game. Now you must place where two sides connect to each other. And if you can't place tiles down for some reason, you can draw a tile, check to see if you can place it. If you can't, you discard that, draw a new tile, and pass your turn. And that is basically how the game is played with the basic actions, these basic four actions in the game. So the board's going to basically increase as that goes on, um, and you're going to run into towns here. Towns are actions that you can take when placing the tile down to begin with before your main four actions, provided you have characters that are already on other towns, and they do unique actions that are advanced in the game. And these guys can also be placed down as additional unique um, aspects to the game as well. But the main objective is to simply destroy all of your opponents and place your characters down here in this little area here. Once you get six victory points, you win the game. And of course, if you can get one character in each of the four towns unopposed and there is a direct area between them, um, between all four of the towns, you can win that way as well. Uh, the final thing to say is you cannot go through mountains. So regardless, if this character were to be here, he or she could not move through here. They must go here and then they have to go across this way here because you can't go through mountainous areas and mountainous areas also block any other movement aspects in the game but otherwise you have the two different movement abilities you're going to have the water which will let you go from one water area to another so this can make me go all the way to here as a water action and then of course you have the roads so if all these guys were here and i took a road action i can move my character all the way to here and it would go clockwise a <laughs> better option would be to go like this all the way through here and then come out to this side over here. 
And that's basically it. There's some bonus actions that you can take in the game based on your characters. And this is all about tile placement, tile laying, saving your mountains for combat, and attempting to gather these victory points or attempting to gain control or area control in the game, Blood of the Northmen. Okay, let's uh, come up and do my review. Oh, one little thing too. I love the fact that these are double-sided. That's really cool. Okay, so let's go ahead and review the game. And the, the first thing I want to say about the game is it is a similar tile placement game to something you may have played before, but what's very unique about it is you're going to be utilizing miniatures in the game. You're going to have your own unique miniatures that, of course, you can go ahead and choose to paint if you would like, and you're going to be moving them around a board based on the tiles that you place. And the tiles that you place having these actions, having them done in a specific way, uh, create a lot of variety in your hand that you can utilize. And of course, the more victory points you get, uh, the harder it is because the more characters come off uh, from your area, your settlement, into the board area, into the towns, uh, and, and you're basically going to run out of ways to draw tiles as you accumulate more victory points and your characters leave. So you have to kind of delegate who goes where and when and how you can win the game with the uh, amount of characters that you have available to you. Additionally, too, there's a bunch of different special ability tiles that you can randomly get at the beginning of the game, and so each player is, is kind of like your player unique ability. Ability. It's not generally attached to this, but it's basically the same thing, uh, but it just provides you a variety of different options there. Uh, you have, the, of course, the player aids, which are very nice, very easy to understand once you go through the rulebook once, and then, of course, a first player marker. Uh, all the artwork is solid. The fact that there is a hundred, over a hundred of these tiles here is really cool, and they're all very, very different. When you make this board at the end of the game, you are going to see a different and unique board each and every time, and it's going to look like a terrain. It's going to look Look like you're actually crossing this area. It's actually one of the games uh, that has this type of style that does, I think it does it best uh, for at least, I, I can't think of anyone that comes to mind. You know, I've played the the different like Carcassonne and all that. Uh, this one's just very, very detailed and pretty and the way you attach the tiles makes it look very, uh, I don't know, Google Maps like style. You can see that it is a kind of a world that you are building. Um, all the component quality is excellent. I really liked all the component quality. I, uh, high quality, thick uh, pieces. Artwork is very exceptional. Uh, you can tell your miniatures from others. And of course, the fact that you can paint them is going to be nice. And uh, yeah, they just did a really good job on that. Uh, artwork on the, on the main box and in the rule book is uh, excellent as well. And of course, mainly it's going to be all uh, terrain style uh, rules uh, or no rules, art. Um, uh, with the rule book, it's it's a little challenging to understand at first, and it repeats itself. So there's like some minor technical things that like were, were whatever to me, but. Okay, when you place a thing and you need to do the water action, it'll tell you that you can draw a card for each water action instead. And it'll do that for each and every single one as opposed to just like, you know, the extra detail, which I guess is never bad, but it just felt a little repetitive. Um, some of the things like these strongholds, understanding how to utilize them, didn't, it wasn't exceptionally clear uh, to begin with. And then, of course, you need to look up all your ability tiles. This doesn't really explain as much as I would have liked. Uh, but uh, it's probably nitpicking, I suppose. Um, also, you have to grasp that when you draw tiles, it's going to be based on the amount of characters here. I thought it was my hand limit at first. It's not it. Uh, from what I'm gathering from the rules is... You have three dudes here. That's the max amount of tiles that you can gather into your hand uh, during your turn. And then this is your victory points. You can put them anywhere from the board or from the, your starting location here. You have the options to do that. So like I said, just like, like the little clarity things that were kind of like, okay, I, I kind of get this now. Um, the combat is fun. I like the fact that you're utilizing tiles for combat with mountains on the tiles and you have to choose whether you want to use a mountain tile to attack. But then when you do that, you kind of reduce the amount of mountains that you have have. And you can also pull from the stacks over here, which is nice, but something um, that's kind of risky as well. So you have a little bit of risk and reward. Uh, gathering tiles is useful, but it, pre it prevents you from doing a lot of actions. So on our game last night, Max had a ton of tiles in his hand, but he had no characters on the board and he didn't have any control over the areas that he was present in. And that's a problem. Yes, he could defeat people in attacks, but with no units to attack with, it doesn't really matter, right? And uh, the, uh, the, the opposite was just me. I had a ton of characters out, but I was rocking one or two tiles the entire game, which means whenever I had combat, I'd have to draw them from the top of the stacks instead. Uh, which actually didn't work out too bad, but it, it is risky. Um, this game is risk-reward, it's tile placement, it's combat, 
ish and then it's going to have that like area control where if you can get all four of the towns and you can make a circuitous route uh, to all your characters without m mountains walking then you can win the game that way this is a lot of fun it's pretty straightforward actually really easy to understand once you get through the rules like straightforward i can now explain the game to you i think uh, fairly well um, uh, but overall i really really enjoyed blood of the northmen if this is something for you there's a link down below and the kickstarter is currently up today as of the recording of this video Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Blood of the Northmen, currently on Kickstarter by Shaza Games. If you're interested in this game, like I said before, there's a link down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button. It greatly helps out here. We do greatly appreciate it. You can check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog post content, giveaways coming out to you every week. You can go ahead and join that and see all the different types of reviews we got that are different than these because uh, Brian gets different games than me and Josh. I, there's a bunch of writers that do that stuff. I don't even write anything, so if you're tired of my content, then you can check out that one over there. Uh, you can also go ahead and hit up Patreon. Dollar a month goes a long way. I'm going to try and fix the uh, live stream having issues. We had it yesterday. It was like, oh my gosh, it constantly like not good. Um, I think it's the multiple streaming. We're going to set it down to two platforms instead of all three. Maybe we'll switch it week by week, uh, but it's always going to be Facebook and then it'll be either Twitch or, or YouTube. And hopefully that will, will solidify things. And Moonshell, all of the bags are finished. The mermaids are finally finished and they're working on the box now. All the artwork is done and it's ready to go. So it's coming at you real quick. So that's pretty much all I got for you guys and different types of stuff going on here. And of course the streams, which will come up every Sunday, 6.30 p.m. PST. We had 4th of July, which is why we pushed it to yesterday, but now we're going back to Sundays. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching, and as always, I look forward to destroying your Viking army <laughs> next time. Yeah. yeah, Viking army. That's that's wrong. What the hell? It's a, it's a, what are they called again?